Mike Check, Ryder in Syracuse, an ACC non-conference matchup for the Orange. Mike Check. Mike Check, Mike Check, Mike Check. Mike Check. Mike Check here. Mike Check. Once again, a quick mic check here. Is it Syracuse and Ryder inside the Dome? Game number three on the season for the Orange following a win against Niagara earlier this week and an 85-84 to victory and a tight one against Bryant in the season opener. My name is Giovanni Heater. This is a mic check. Mic check. Welcome inside the Carrier Dome as it's a non-conference matchup on the slate for the Syracuse Orange playing host to the Ryder Broncos. Game number three on the season for Syracuse. And this is a meeting for the first time in 70 years. Syracuse and Ryder faced off in the year 1950 with Syracuse winning that matchup, and they haven't played since. So it's the second overall meeting for the two schools, the Syracuse Orange, looking to extend this season to 3-0. and And on the other side, the Ryder Broncos playing their first game of 2020-2021 basketball. The Orange coming off of a 30-point victory over Niagara earlier this week. It was a 75-45 to performance for the Orange. And Syracuse, the big story without Buddy Beheim and without Barama Sidibe. Needing that production down low, Quincy Garrier was the guy with the answer. He stepped up huge for Syracuse, led the way in scoring 23 points, 16 rebounds, a very, very impressive double-double uh, for Quincy Garrier out of Canada, creating that pipeline for Syracuse, really stepping up in his sophomore season. And then right around the other side, as I mentioned, this is their first ball game of 2020. So we're inside the Dome. It's a beautiful day to be a Syracuse fan. A football matchup earlier today against the number two ranked team in the country. It didn't fall in the way of the Orange, but they kept in it. It was a tightly contested matchup. And now we have some college hoops inside the Dome. It doesn't get better than a doubleheader Saturday. And we're underway. Quincy Garrier taking the initial tip off. The starting lineup for Syracuse, the same as last time, Joe Girard running the one, and then Kadari Richmond running the two, Gary A, the four, Alan Griffin, the three, and Merrick Dolajai, the five. So a foul on the left side will go the other way. Initially winning the tip was Ryder, and now Syracuse takes it, an offensive foul against the Broncos, and Joe Girard takes it up the court, gives it off the left side, Kadari Richmond, 
Back over to Gerard. He's been struggling. Richmond pulls up for three, and he hits. Kaderi Richmond starting the game right where he left off. Had a sensational game in his first start earlier this week. And now he hits the floor, get the orange going early with a three-pointer from the left side. Syracuse up three zip, 19-14 left to play. We've just played about 45 seconds and ride over the drive to the inside. Kick out, now penetrating. A nice floater here and score it. The bucket that time, Dwight Murray Jr., the six foot 180 180-pound junior out of Austell, Georgia. Kick to the inside, Syracuse going the other way. Kadari Richmond out to Allen Griffin, right side, three-pointer, pull up, give it to him. Just like that, back-to-back -back threes for the Orange. It's a 6-2 advantage with 18.47 left to go here in the first half. So early on, Syracuse is perfect from three-point, 100%, two shots and two makes. Bucket on the other side for Ryder. It was Dwight Murray Jr., and he has the ball again. Now a kick out. Penetration this time. Pass to the inside. A contested bucket. Merrick Dolajai swats it away. Joe Girard had it going up the other end. Over to Allen Griffin. Deep. Confident three. Oh, my goodness. Allen Griffin, back-to-back -back threes. Syracuse is 100% from beyond the arc, and it's 9-2 to two, just like that. The Orange starting out hot with three three-pointers in a row. I've never seen it before. Ryder starting out hot as well, missing that time. Allen Griffin the rebound. And it's still 9-2 Syracuse. 17-52 left to play. Gerard at the top. Over to Allen Griffin on the left side. Gives it back to Gerard. Gerard a dish to the middle. Dolajai couldn't handle it. Got it. Kicks it out to Garrier. Garrier a pump fake. Driving on the inside. He lets a layup go, and he's unable to get it. Now kick out Dolajai. Three-pointer. Merrick Dolajai hits it. Syracuse is four for four from three. They call it a two-pointer. So instead, it's a two-pointer, but Merrick Dolajai with a jump shot, it's an 11-2 lead for Syracuse, and things are exciting early in the Dome. 17 minutes and 19 seconds, counting down in the first half. 11-2 Orange. Left side, Steel Kadari Richmond kicks it up court. Joe Girard the third, contested layup. He gets it swatted off the backboard, but instead, it's a foul. So Joe Girard the third, one of the nation's best free throw shooters in the country last year is going to take a trip to the charity stripe after he was fouled. Kadari Richmond with the steal, sent it up court. Richmond had a phenomenal game against Niagara. Gerard has struggled through two, but he has a chance to put some points up here. First one is good. So 12-2 to two now. Joe Gerard the third with the bucket. I see your comments, guys. Typically, I don't uh, you know, really pay attention to the comments, but uh, unfortunately, I cannot show the game. Uh, copyrights, I do a radio-style broadcast. I apologize um, as much as I'd love to. I'm not authorized to do so. So Instead, it's a radio-style broadcast, but I promise it's worth sticking around. Kick out to the right side. Ryder taking it. Now on the left, they're really sharing the ball well here. Ryder wearing all maroon with some silver piping and Syracuse the all-white traditional home uniforms. Dwight Murray Jr. with it again. He's wearing neon green shoes. Tie up in the corner. Syracuse the zone having a big impact. Two seconds left in the shot clock and a floater goes for the Broncos. A great shot there out of Christian Ings, the 6'270 pound guard out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He gets a floater to go, and that's two floaters in a row. Alan Griffin, three, top of the key. Give it to him. Alan Griffin, his third triple of the night, 15-4 to four, Syracuse. Jumps out to a huge early lead, 16-12 left to go. The Orange are four for four from three-point land. They cannot miss right now. Kick out. Left side, Rodney Henderson Jr. Dishes it to the middle. Now a kick back out. Dwight Murray Jr., pump fake. Henderson Jr., top of the key. He'll let a three fly. This one is off the front rim, tips away. Allen Griffin had it for a second, then it was knocked out of his hands by Allen Powell. Nonetheless, the Orange will keep the possession alive. Awarded to Syracuse. Allen Griffin, three three-pointers. Syracuse is four for four starting out the ball game, and it's a 15-4 to four advantage for the Orange. They take a TV timeout, and we'll take a quick break here as well. The Orange, big. Up early.
Yeah, I see the comments. Just to revisit, uh, I do apologize. I'm unable to show the broadcast of the game. This is a radio-style broadcast, but I do hope that you will stick around and watch the uh, rest of the matchup. It's a good one tonight. Syracuse and Ryder inside the Dome, the second overall meeting. Haven't met since the year 1950. All the way back in 1950 was the Orange and the Broncos' first matchup. Have not played a game since. Second overall meeting between the two teams, and Syracuse out to an early start. Score right now, 15-4 to four in favor of Syracuse. Game is broadcast on the Yes Network to watch. Just to answer your questions in the comments. But again, I usually don't pay much attention to the comments, so we're going to get back to play-by-play uh, -play once play resumes here. TV break. For Syracuse and Ryder. Syracuse without Brahma Sidibe today. And they're going to be out without him for the next four weeks. The torn meniscus. And unfortunately, Brahma Sidibe has suffered knee troubles throughout his tenure at Syracuse. It's been a big, you know, hindrance on his game and the potential that he could have. And another situation here where he's going to be out the next four weeks. The torn meniscus underwent surgery the day after the injury. They're hoping to have him back the four week exactly, Mark, would be actually the North Carolina game, and that would be an ideal time to have Barama Sidibe back, certainly. So for now, Merrick Dolezal filling in, playing the five. Still a little bit of a competition in that room. You have Jesse Edwards, you have John Bolajak, and you have Frank Anselim, and uh, none of them have gotten, you know, chunk minutes, really just kind of time at the end of the game. And it's been Merrick Dolezal filling that void. As everyone knows, Jim Beheim's only really going to play, you know, seven, maybe eight guys, sometimes nine guys deep. You're not going to see him run uh, 11, 12 guys like some of these other teams. He's just not. So for Merrick Dolezal to play center most of the game isn't all that surprising. Uh, and it gives Kadari Richmond an opportunity to be in the starting lineup. The original starting lineup was Gerard at the top, Buddy in at the two and then it was Dolajai at the four it was Alan Griffin at the three and it was Sidibe at the five Gerard pulls up for three that stops the hot streak so now Syracuse four for five from three and Gerard couldn't hit he struggled the last couple of games love to have a bounce back today Beheim said that he played the worst he's ever watched him play in this season opener and Beheim promised that you don't think he'll ever see him play that bad again. Now, a foul on the inside. Ryder had the possession. Merrick Dolajai hits the, hits the ground. Getting a little bit rough inside. Looks like the call is going to go against Syracuse. And on Merrick Dolajai. So that's Merrick Dolajai's first foul. Kick out to the top of the key. And some new faces in for Ryder and the substitutions. Alan Powell's running the point. Gives it over to Dwight Murray. Back to Powell. Over to Murray. Now kick out to the corner. Pull up jumper. This one is good. Score it. Rodney Henderson Jr., a grad transfer out of Carson, California, coming in to play for Ryder this year. And he hits a big shot. It's 15-6. to six. Syracuse with a nine-point advantage. Dolajai kicks it out. Kadari Richmond at the top. Now Gerard on the right side. Gerard gives it off to Alan Griffin, a sloppy pass. Griffin pulls up way deep, and he scores it. Alan Griffin is unconscious from three-point range right now, and he simply cannot miss. These shots are deep, well beyond NBA three range, and Alan Griffin is having himself one heck of a first half so far. It's very early, but he cannot miss. Now Dwight Murray Jr. pulls off, three-pointer off the back of the rim. Dolajai rebounds, Syracuse going quickly the other way. Dolajai back to Kadari Richmond. Richmond thinking about a drive, driving to the inside. He gets it taken away, and no foul is called. Richmond certainly wanted one, looked like he took one to the chin, but the refs are going to let him play. So now Allen Powell has it at the top of the key, over to Rodney Henderson Jr. Jr. inside to Powell. Powell pulls it back to the top. Over to Henderson. Back to Powell. Powell, a pump fake. Drives. Kicks out to the right side. Back to Powell now at the top. Kadari Richmond gets a hand on it. And you see that last week. A very large amount of steals for Kadari Richmond. Five steals for Kadari Richmond last week. 
against Niagara. He has that wingspan. Beheim loves him at the top of the zone. A lot of Syracuse fans kind of calling for him to play the one instead of Joe Girard the third. And Joe Girard was you know recruited here to play the one. He has that great chemistry with Buddy, but Joe struggled. And Kadari Richmond has shown glimpses of a lot of talent. Kick to the inside and one. But instead, it's called a travel against Ryder. What could have been a nice bucket for them? Syracuse, an 18 to 6 advantage, 13 37 left to play here. Nobody Beheim tonight for Syracuse either. Gerard pulls up from three. That was a deep one. Give it to him. 21 to 6 is the score inside the dome, and it's all orange on Jim Beheim's court. 13 20 to go in the first half. Syracuse unconscious from three, only one miss from beyond the arc. Now a pull out. Powell pulls up from three off the back rim. Offensive rebound on the inside. Now a shot again. That one's off the back rim once more for Ryder. It was Rodney Henderson Jr. who couldn't get it to go. A foul against Syracuse chasing after the rebound. 13.05 5 left to go. It's a 21 6 advantage for the Orange. Now Powell on the right side gives it back. Dwight Murray back to Powell. Powell, a nice crossover on Gerard, but Gerard's not having it. Dish to the inside, knocked away by Kadari Richmond, and it is Merrick Dolajai who picks it up, and he picks up a foul as well. So a foul on the inside, chasing after that loose ball that time against Naheem Benson, the freshman from Streetsboro, Ohio. He's a forward on this squad, 6'7", 215-pounder out of Lutheran East High School, and he checks out of the game. Coming in for him now on the Raider Broncos is going to be Jeremiah Pope. Gerard on the left side, feed in, and Quincy Garrier stuffs the alley-oop home. Syracuse jumps out to a 23-6 lead, 12-31 left to go, and it's an offensive onslaught by the Orange. Some new faces in, as I mentioned, here for Ryder, and they're sharing the ball fairly well. Now a kick to the middle. Murray tries to get one of the inside. Alan Griffin's there to take it away. It's another steal for Syracuse, and the zone has been suffocating. Only six points for Ryder. Merrick Dolajai screen. Kick out from Allen to Richmond. Kadari Richmond, fancy dribbling moves over to Dolajai. Dolajai tries to soak a foul, tries to get a layup to go, and the floater from the ACC logo wouldn't hit. Instead, it goes out of bounds, and Ryder will take the possession following a quick TV timeout on the Yes Network. So we'll take a very brief break here on Orange Sheet. Thank you so much for joining us. Unfortunately, my broadcast partner couldn't be here tonight, Kyle Marshak. Typically, I would have him along for both football and basketball, but some prior engagements. Nonetheless, we're having a good time. So Syracuse with a big lead over Ryder just a couple minutes into this one. It's all Orange on Jim Beheim's court.
Welcome back here inside the Dome. You're listening to Orange Sheet. My name is Giovanni Heater, your play-by-play commentator for the night, and it's Syracuse and Ryder. A big matchup here inside the Dome for Syracuse, looking to go 3-0. and And in a season like 2020, you could say, yeah, this is a simple non-conference game for Syracuse. Some people might not tune in, yada, yada, yada. But in a season like this, every game matters, and Syracuse looking to build that resume. You can't afford a loss in games like this, and you saw it against Bryant for the Orange in the season opener, 85 to 84. Those 14 days of missed practices really showed. And, you know, Bryant kind of at that same competition level as Niagara and Ryder. And the Orange just great offensively and just kind of caught, got caught up in the in a close game. So every game matters uh, down the stretch of a season. A loss here could mean a lot come March as Joe Girard the third. A great pump fake lets the three fly, and this one scores it. Gerard's two for three from three point land. It's 26 to six advantage for Syracuse. 11 22 to go, and the Orange are dominant. A nice floater here on the inside going the other way for Bryant. It's Alan Powell who got that one to make, and they draw it within 18. Gerard, kick out. Right side, Quincy Garrier. Still the same lineup that started the game, except Woody Newton's in for Kadari Richmond, the freshman. Dolajai on the inside. Try to get some post work going and a foul that time on the interior. It's not a shooting foul, but it does put Syracuse in a situation pushing towards the bonus. Not quite yet, though. Naheem Benson was the guilty party. And the Orange will inbound. Dolezal is playing aggressive and gets his arm slapped. Woody Newton kick out Gerard corner three and he got it. Joe Gerard the third. He's heating up and he didn't like what the newspapers had to say about him saying that he couldn't play. Absolutely not. The kid from Glens Falls starting out tonight. Very impressive. Kick out. Pass to the inside. A jumper for Ryder. That one doesn't go. The man on the shot that time was Tyrell Bladen, and Joe Girard's taking it up the court for Syracuse. Dribbles it across his back. Now over to Alan Griffin, top of the key. Griffin pull up. Deep three. This one misses everything. So Alan Griffin, a bit of a heat check after an impressive start, and he misses the entire bucket. So <laughs> Alan Griffin started very strong. Three for three. Actually, it might have been four for four from three-point land. But that time he missed everything. Highly contested three. You don't think that Jim Beheim is too happy about that. I'm sure he had words for the transfer from Illinois. Now Ryder's taking it the other way. It's a 29 to 8 advantage for Syracuse. Kick to the inside. Now out, three-point shot is up and off the mark. Woody Newton, the rebound for Syracuse, going the other way. Up to Gerard on the left side. Gerard slides one over to Garrier from Alan Griffin. Garrier, pump fake, drives, soaks the foul, almost gets the layup to go. Not quite, but instead it's going to be a foul shooting, and Garrier is going to take a trip to the line for two. John Bull, a jock, checking into the game for Syracuse. And it looks like he will most likely take out Merrick Dolajai on the inside playing the five. So out uh, of Frank Anselm and Jesse Edwards, John Bolajak seems to be the man. He is getting the most burn at the center position. Joe Girard, deep three, almost hit, rattled around the rim and out. And the rebound that time for Tyrell Bladen, Ryder taking it up the court. Drive to the inside, kick to the middle. Woody Newton was there for a huge block, but instead they call it a foul. Foul on the floor. It's a shooting foul on the inside, and taking a trip to the line for two will be, listen to this one, Ahiri Ogomano Johnson. So Ahiri Ogomano Johnson is going to take a trip to the free throw line. He's a junior out of Pennsylvania, 6'8", 210-pound forward. He's a big guy on the inside, and it proved there. Woody Newton put his hands up in the air. Jim Beheim didn't like the call, but... Instead, it's two free throws for Ryder. One off the back rim bounces in, and Ryder draws within 20. It's 29 to 9 advantage for Syracuse. 9.40 left to go in the first half. Ahiri Ogamanu Johnson, his second free throw is now up, and it's good. So 29 to 10 is your score right now. 9.40 left to go. In the first half of action, Syracuse leads it by a large margin. Joe Girard on the right side, tightly guarded here by Powell. Over to Garrier, top of the key. Garrier thought about shooting the three, decided to not do it. He was tightly guarded, so I'm glad he didn't. Gives it over to John Bullajak. 
Gives it off to Griffin. Now Gerard at the top of the key. Nine seconds to go in the shot clock. He loses his dribble on it, and out of bounds it goes. So Gerard gets it poked away, and Gerard doesn't think that it was off his arm, but yeah, that's typically every guy's going to plead that case. The ref blows the whistle, and the other way we send it. Some more new faces in here for Ryder. Rodney Henderson Jr. had it for a second at the top. Gives it up to Christian Ings. Ings dribbles through his rag legs. Three-pointer on the right side. Count it. Dwight Murray Jr. and gets one to go. And he's a junior out of Austin, Georgia. It's a 29-13 advantage now for Syracuse. A five-point swing for the Broncos. Right side, Gerard. Gary A. comes, sets a screen. Alan Griffin, top of the key. Griffin's going to drive to the inside. Kicks it over to John Bullajock. A jock swarmed out to Gerard. Deep three. Gerard can't get it to go. And it was a foul. Excuse me, a travel call on the inside. John Bullajock's guilty. And his teammates giving him a high five. He knew, he knew he messed up there. That's why Gerard let one fly. Didn't count. So Ryder takes it the other way following a five-point run, 5-0 run, I should say, for the Broncos, looking to extend upon it and maybe make this game a little bit closer. It's all Syracuse so far in the Dome. 29-13, 8-20 left to go. Kick out. Drive in by Murray, and he steps on the out-of-bounce line. They're not going to count the bucket, and we'll send it the other way. John Bolajak to inbound, Joe Girard to take it up the court. 29-13, 8-15 left to go. Jim Beheim, all masked up, wearing his face shield as well. He's got the double action going on. Gerard gives it off to Gary A. Now Alan Griffin on the left side. Pump fake, drives in, lobs one up, try to give it to Gary A, and over his head it went. I don't think Gary A expected it. It's going to go in the books as a turnover for Alan Griffin. And Merrick Dolajai is going to check back into the game at the five center position, taking out John Bull Ajak. And Jim Beheim having words with his young center. That's what you expect. Jim Beheim does it the best. One of the greatest coaches of all time. So miscommunication for Ryder, nearly sending this ball out of bounds, able to recover, drive to the inside, and nearly getting a bucket to go was Agamanu Johnson, but instead it's a rebound going the other way. Dolashai gives it up to Gerard. Gerard pull up from the elbow. Oh, rattles around the rim, off the backboard, couldn't get it to go. Still 29-13, 7.33 left to go. Merrick Dolajai with a nice pass. Gerard couldn't convert. So 7.33, Syracuse, 29-13, a timeout on the court. TV timeout, and we'll take a real quick break here. Thanks so much for joining us, Syracuse, with a big advantage inside the Dome, looking to go 3-0. and All right, welcome back inside the Carrier Dome. It's all orange thus far, and Syracuse is getting hot from behind the three-point arc. Alan Griffin hit a couple of big ones. Joe Girard III continued the scoring. 
And Merrick Dolajai hit a couple of buckets too. Quincy Garrier has been strong on the boards, and it's a fantastic start for Syracuse. A double trouble is what they're calling it right now. Alan Griffin, 12 points, 4 for 5 from the field, 4 for 5 from 3. Joe Girard, 10 points, 3 for 6 from the field, and 3 for 5 from 3. So all 12 of Alan Griffin's points have come from beyond the arc, and Syracuse, a team people are nervous, might live or die by the 3 a little bit this year. And uh, so far, that not that it's been the case, but right now Syracuse is living by the 3 tonight. Alan Griffin, 4 for 5 from 3-point land, and that's all the shots he's taken. Luckily, a lot of them have fallen, and Jim Beheim's kept him in the rotation. So a pass to the inside. Ryder now with its 29-13 advantage for Syracuse. 7-21 to go. Merrick Dolajai hits the ground pretty roughly here, and it looks like a foul call goes against Ryder on the inside. I'm not sure exactly who the guilty party is. If I had to guess, it's going to be a Ogameno Ogameno Johnson because he was right up against Merrick Dolajai. And it is an offensive foul against Johnson. So they are going to take an official review and possibly look at a flagrant here. Maybe a little bit of an elbow to the face of Merrick Dolezal. He soaked that one. We, we know how many times Merrick Dolezal has taken a big hit, whether that be taking a Zion Williamson charge years ago or dunking the basketball into his own face. He's known for doing that as well. Nonetheless, is certainly a fan favorite out of Slovakia in his senior year. Been a staple of the Syracuse basketball program for the last four and just excited to see him finish out his career here in an orange and blue jersey. So I don't think there's any kind of flagrant here. I think that it's simply just an offensive foul, and that will be the case. And it's a 29-13 advantage for Syracuse, 720 left to go, as I mentioned. Up next for Syracuse, it's going to be a road trip to Rutgers. What a game that'll be. And the ACC Big Ten Challenge, then come the real teams. Woody Newton at the top of the key. Gives it off Kadari Richmond, two freshmen in. They had a sensational alley play last week. Kadari Richmond, fancy dribbling. Gives it to Garrier. Garrier driving on the inside. Spins off to Allen Griffin, who gets the layup to go. Driving through the lane. A beautiful cut it was from the Illinois transfer, and Garrier picks up the assist. 31-13 is your score. 6.49 to go in the first half. It's all Syracuse inside the dome. Flip-flop the numbers, 13-31. And Ryder taking it up the court the other way. Jeremiah Pope, kick out to Murray from the ACC logo. Free throw line jumper, give it to him. It's 31-15, 6.30 to play. And Kadari Richmond takes it up the court for Syracuse. So Richmond running the point. Gerard out of the game. Kick out. Woody Newton wants three from the right side. Give him three. Woody Newton, freshman to freshman connection once again. And the tandem duo strike once more. Woody Newton, three-pointer to start this game, and he had a three-pointer to start last game against Niagara. The kid is talented. Syracuse fans are extremely excited for these two, Kadari Richmond and Woody Newton of this 2020 class, and they've played some phenomenal basketball through three games. My question is going to be, how will these rotations change once Bayheim comes back? Three-pointer on the right side, Ryder scores it, and the bucket that time for three, Rodney Henderson Jr. My question, though, would be, how are these rotations really going to change once Bayheim comes back? He'll look to come back. After the Rutgers game, going to miss this game, going to miss the Rutgers game on Tuesday. Alan Griffin, step back three, creating separation, gets it to go. The home court advantage bounce, tips it off the front iron, and it kisses off the glass and just goes in the bucket. So it's 36-18 advantage for Syracuse, and they score every time down the court the last couple of possessions. 5.36 to go in the half. Kick out left side. Murray pump fake. Now a three-pointer from the top of the key. This one rolls around the rim off the mark. Rebound Woody Newton. Foul on the floor, and it goes against Ryder. So the foul on the inside was Arihe, or Ahire Agamanu Johnson, as I said again, and the three-pointer that was off the mark was taken from the outside by Benson. 36-18, 5.25 to go. Kadari Richmond taking it, running the point. Richmond, left side, Allen Griffin. Griffin gives it right back to him. Syracuse running some different set plays here, which is definitely awesome to see. Richmond takes an isolation, drives to the inside. A floater gets put up from the left elbow. Can't get the bucket, but he does get the foul, and he'll take a trip to the charity stripe. Kadari Richmond, his first shots from the free throw line tonight. 
Richmond, the sensational freshman who's going to do big things for Syracuse this year. The thing that Bayheim loves about him is his capability to play within the zone. That long wingspan and that big height to Canary Richmond is probably his biggest asset, wearing number three for the Orange. 6'5", 180-pound freshman out of Brooklyn, New York. And he is special, an offensive talent and a defensive talent. Can do it all on both ends of the court. First free throw was good for Richmond, and the second one is up and nails it. So Richmond's two for two from the charity stripe tonight. It's 38 to 18. Huge lead for Syracuse. 5.06 left to go. 26 seconds in the shot clock. Murray top of the key. Neon green shoes. Kick to the inside. Driving to the bucket that time was Rodney Henderson Jr., and it's called a foul on the court. Woody Newton, the guilty party for Syracuse. And Ryder will keep this possession. Jesse Edwards checking into the game for the Orange. Dolezal's back in as well. Jumper from the left side. Count it. Big bucket there from Agumanu Johnson. 38-20 to 20 lead for Syracuse. They lead it by 18. 4.47 to go. Gerard deep three, and he can't get it to go. Rattles around the rim. Bayheim's probably not too happy with that pull from Gerard. Certainly a heat check confidence type of shot. Very early in the shot clock. Canary Richmond jumps out for a steal. Richmond dunks it home. And Syracuse is up 20 with 427 left to go in the dome. This kid is sensational. A diaper dandy, as Dick Vitale would say. His trademark slogan for Stellar college basketball freshman. That's how Richmond plays. Extremely athletic. Murray a pump fake. Driving to the inside. A floater from the elbow. Can't get it to go. And a rebound. Merrick Dolajai quickly sending it up the court. Kicks it out. Woody Newton. Wide open three. Left side. Gets the bucket. Woody Newton scores it. And it's a timeout for Ryder. Syracuse. Scores on back-to-back -back plays. The freshman once more, Richmond with the steal, sends it the other way for the dunk. And then Merrick Dolezal gets the rebound, gives it off to the other freshman, Woody Newton, who sends home a trifecta. So we'll take a quick break as there's a timeout on the court for Ryder. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll be back in just a moment. Syracuse, a big advantage over the Broncos inside the dome. So I figured I'd take this opportunity to take a look at some of your guys' questions here. Well, it's during a timeout, and we can start doing that. So if you guys have questions about the team or anything like that, feel free to drop them in the chat section, the comment section, and I'll definitely take a look during each timeout. That seems like the best way to go about it. So a lot of people saying that they don't get the game on cable. I'm glad I could bring you guys the game. Unfortunately, I can't show the game, but happy to do a radio broadcast. Again, just... Pursuing the dreams over here. Goal is to pursue a career in sports broadcasting. High school senior. Let's see, Matthew says, "Yo, know, 
Oh, that's awesome. You know, actually, Syracuse always my dream school to be a BDJ major at Newhouse. So congratulations on achieving that. That's the best place to go to school um, for it in the world. It's just the reputation's incredible. Um, a lot of good programs out there as well, too, though, but that, that's amazing. Congratulations on that. Thanks for tuning in. Now we're back to basketball. Kick out rider airball in a jump shot and now Kadari Richmond comes away with it going up the court loses his dribble gives it off left side Woody Newton three from the corner give it to him Woody Newton is unconscious as well this Syracuse team just can't help but put the ball in the bucket tonight it's 46 20 inside the dome 319 left to go in the first half and the two freshmen are leading the way Murray on the left side Richmond with some very tight, suffocating defense. Pass to the interior. Jesse Edwards tips it away, and Robert Braswell chases it down. It does go out of bounds off of Braswell's hands. So Ryder will keep it for the moment. Now an interesting lineup here. Gerard at the one. Richmond at the two. Woody Newton playing the three. Then you have Robert Braswell at the five. And now you have Jesse Edwards or excuse me, Jesse Edwards at the five and Robert Braswell at the four. Deep three, end of the shot clock. Oh, wow. That was a big one for Ryder and a confidence booster there. Huge bucket from Rodney Henderson Jr. from way deep as the shot clock expired. It's 46-23 Syracuse, 2.43 to go. Richmond drives to the inside. Kick out, Braswell corner three. And he can't get it to go, missed it all. Rebound Murray. Ryder taking it quickly the other way. Henderson Jr. pump fake back to Murray. Top of the key three. Scores it. Rattles around the rim and drops. So Murray with a big three and Henderson Jr. won prior to it. That's back-to-back -back triples from downtown for the Ryder Broncos. And they have this back to a 20-point game. It almost got away from him. Gerard deep three. He hit it and he got fouled. They did not call the foul, but he definitely got hip-checked. Hits a deep three from the top of the key. Nonetheless, Syracuse sends it back to a 23-point game. Syracuse 12 for 17 from three-point land. Ryder shooting well as well. Four for nine from beyond the arc. But Syracuse 12 for 17. They can't seem to miss. Murray on the inside, and he coughs up the ball. It's going to be a turnover. Sent it out of bounds. Looking for an intended receiver, but no cigar. So Syracuse will take the ball back. Minute 44 to go and a 23-point lead. 49-26 is your score inside the Dome right now. Gerard, top of the key, calling for a play to start. Gives it off to Richmond. Now Woody Newton with the drive. Pull-up jumper from the free throw line. Couldn't get it to go. Missed the entire net again. But I think that one was certainly tipped. Now Murray, kick out. Corner three for Ryder. Score it. A big bucket there, and it's Christian Ings that gets it to go. Gerard passed to the inside, intended for Jesse Edwards. Syracuse moving quickly, a little bit too quickly. Out of bounds it goes, deflected off the hands of Jesse Edwards. Fancy dribbling middle of the court by Murray, and he finds Ings, who sticks it from the corner. Both teams shooting exceptionally well. Now Ings, three-pointer again, top of the key, rattles around and can't drop. So the rebound, Jesse Edwards, and I totally did say Denver Broncos instead of the Ryder Broncos. Joe Girard out to Braswell. He wants three from the right side, off the rim and out. Jesse Edwards rebound, try to get it to Braswell, who was cutting to the hoop, and it's taken away by Murray going down the court. Murray, pull up three, and it rattles around no good. Woody Newton the rebound, and Syracuse slowing it down for the final 30 seconds. 26 on the shot, 28 on the game clock. Jim Beheim elects to call a timeout, so when they come back, it'll be 27.5 seconds game clock, 23 on the shot clock. So Syracuse will have to come up with a little something, but won't be able to hold it for the final shot. Ryder will have that opportunity, barring an offensive rebound for Syracuse, of course. And we'll take a look at some of the comments, answer any questions about the Syracuse owners. There's a lot of people saying that they don't have cable to view the game. And again, that's uh, my, that, it's, it's weird because some people, it's if you're in Syracuse, it's available on the Yes Network, but that's not everywhere and uh, certainly strange. But I'm glad I bring the broadcast uh, to everybody 
Thank you so much for joining. It's it's crazy because the football game today had uh, people come and go, but the numbers for basketball are, are just kind of way above what they are for football when the football team was, you know, still early in the year and there was still hope for the season. Uh, the viewership was certainly higher, but people just start to give up for football around here. One in 10 season for the orange basketball undefeated. Everyone loves SU basketball season and the viewership goes way up. So great to see Kadari Richmond, the inbound 18 seconds on the game clock, 11 on the shot clock dribbles it off of his foot. And now Ryder will take it the other way. Shot clock will be no more. That's the first turnover for Kadari Richmond in his young career tonight. Anyways, 13.2 seconds left. Syracuse leads it by 20, 49 to 29. And this team really can score. That's been the problem for Syracuse seasons prior. Is scoring the problem this year? I certainly don't think so. Six seconds left on the clock. Pass to the right side. Gerard tips it away. And out of bounds it goes. So the length of that zone stretching out. Murray, a three at the buzzer and can't get it to go. So your score at halftime will be 49 to 29 for Syracuse and an impressive performance. This team has no trouble scoring the basketball. It's been sensational here tonight for Syracuse. Three-point shooting has been very effective for the Orange. Ryder hanging in there, shooting well from three as well. Nonetheless, it's a 20-point advantage for Syracuse. 49-29 at the half. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back to talk some more college basketball throughout the halftime. Welcome back here on Orange Sheet as it's halftime inside the dome. Syracuse, a 20-point advantage over the Ryder Broncos. 49-29 to 29 is your score. Syracuse looking to extend to 3-0. and And taking a look at some of the statistics, the leading scorer right now for Syracuse is Alan Griffin. Big surprise there. Six for seven from the field, four for five from three. He also has a rebound and assist, two steals tonight. As well. So, Alan Griffin right now is your leading scorer. Right behind him, it's Joe Girard, the third, 13 points, four for eight from the field, four for seven from three point. And he had a trip to the free throw line as well, four assists for Joe. And he's certainly back. He will be out until following the Rutgers game. Has to quarantine for a total of 14 days after coming in contact with a teammate that was tested positive for COVID 19. So, unfortunately, Buddy Beheim is out tonight. We'll be out against Rutgers on Tuesday, and though he's missed, Syracuse has no trouble scoring the ball without him, it seems to be, this evening, and against Niagara as well. So it's only exciting how much more Buddy Beheim can add to this team once he returns. Woody Newton comes in second right now for point leading. He's got nine. He's three for four from the field, three for three from beyond the arc, and he has four rebounds in total as well, counting an assist on that tally. Kadari Richmond comes in at fourth. He's got seven points, two for two from the field, one for one from three, and he's got a pair of free throws, a rebound, four assists, and two steals. So Richmond really doing it all, scoring, rebounding, and playing defense. Dolajai's got two. Gary A's got two. And Gary A and Dolajai each have three rebounds as well. Looking at the other side, Ryder. Their leading scorer currently right now falls in the hands of Henderson Jr. He's three for six, two for four from three-point land. And it's a 20-point advantage for Syracuse. People asking, am I going to Syracuse? Well, 
certainly in my top three schools, uh, like I said, the best broadcasting school in the country. My top three schools right now are Syracuse University at Newhouse, uh, Arizona State University at the Cronkite School of Journalism, and then Virginia Tech University in their sports media and analytics program for sports broadcasting. So three of the top schools in the country for it. Um, I'm excited for the opportunities at all three schools. I've applied to all three schools and uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, one of those three Syracuse, certainly I'm a, obviously a Syracuse fan live here, hometown, uh, the best program in the world, but uh, a lot of opportunities at other places as well. So just, just keeping my mind open and I'm very excited for the journey on and excited to be bringing you Syracuse basketball tonight. So we'll take another quick break here. We'll come back soon enough before the second half gets underway. Syracuse, a 20-point lead over Ryder, 49-29 inside the Dome. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Welcome back on Orange Heat. My name is Giovanni Heater, your play-by-play -play commentator for tonight. And we'll address some questions inside the chat if anybody wants to talk about Syracuse basketball, questions about Syracuse football, pretty much anything. Um, I did understand that comment. I, I thought I had said, you know, just kind of your subconscious said the Denver Broncos, but you were saying it's the Ryder Bronx. So I appreciate the, um, I appreciate the feedback. And I will certainly correct it. It is the Ryder Bronx. It's kind of one of those things that you just read it quickly and your mind it just sees Broncos. That's not the case. So they're the Ryder Bronx. And I apologize to any Ryder fans out there viewing as well. So someone says they're interested in going to New House at Syracuse. What do you need on your resume? Well, you know, um, that's a tough question because I'm not at new house right now. I'd like to think that I know, um, a lot of the stuff they're asking. I, you know, I've, I've reached out to a lot of alumni and, and, uh, current, uh, professors and stuff at Syracuse. Um, but I think that's a better suited question for one of our other viewers who actually said that he is a student, um, at new house. That would probably be the best way to go. Um, just because I'm not a student, I don't want to give any wrong information, but I say any kind of experience helps, you know, whether you're calling a game, whether you're doing anything in this, I mean, that on your resume is everything. It's all about experience. It's all about reps. That's how you get better. That's how you put yourself out there. So that's the biggest thing is doing it, you know, applying yourself and making it happen. Uh, but nonetheless, Syracuse and Ryder currently at halftime, Syracuse leads it 49 to 29. The Orange are 63% from the field, 12 for 18, shooting the three point, seven turnovers for Syracuse. That's the one number that stands out to be a little bit negative. And they have nine points contributing from non starters as well, which is big considering Jim Beheim only plays so many deep. Alan Griffin having a big game for Syracuse as well, and there's a great comment here, so that'll tell you everything you need to know. Like I said, a new house student, he would be this, this certainly the best guy to ask. Yeah, absolutely. That's huge. Um, the program at my high school – kind of built from the ground up and uh, we use the NFHS network now and I call the games there and it's been a blast. Um, I think that's huge. I, like I said, any kind of experience is really, really everything. Um, so yeah, basically that's why I'm doing this. I love it, but it's also to uh, build up that resume as well. Quincy Garrier had a big game for Syracuse last go around 23.16 rebounds led the way for the orange. Scoring hasn't been as effective so far tonight, but it's been shared. The, that's the great thing about this team is there's not going to be that one go-to guy. The wealth is going to be shared across the squad. And then really everybody on this team is capable of scoring the basketball. That's the exciting thing about it. Just think, no Barama Sidibe on the inside right now, and nobody Bayheim and this team has 49 points at half. And I know you're playing Ryder, but Syracuse never puts up 49 points at half really no matter who they're playing. So this is usually a team that's defensively sound and usually doesn't score that high. Instead, we see a high-scoring team last year that struggled defensively, and now it just kind of seems like it's kind of coming together. The defense has been strong. You have length at the top of the zone with Kadari Richmond in there, and now the scoring is certainly effective as well. Shane says, do you think Jerry is going to take over as head coach when Bayheim is done? You know, it's a situation where, I don't know, because you can't count out Adrian Autry. And my fear with Bayheim or not Bayheim, uh, McNamara, is he might be a guy that, you know, depending on how long Bayheim hangs around, he might take off, take another head coaching job. He has this skill set to be a head coach. I was listening in on uh, Eric Devendorf's podcast with him and, 
not that he was hinting he's leaving or anything. He just said, you know, like he, he knows he can be a head coach somewhere and he wants to be a head coach someday. If that opportunity is not in the near future, you know, you might have to think. Um, I also think that Autry would kind of rank ahead of GMAC, been there longer, um, was just ranked on a couple of different lists as like one of the best coaches in NCAA that are not yet head coaches. And Mike Hopkins was one of those before him. So I just kind of feel like Autry's next in line ahead of McNamara. Um, but who knows? Maybe the university takes it a completely different direction and hires somebody from outside the program currently. So who knows? Bayheim plans on coaching for a long time. He said the rumors are false that he'll be done when Buddy's done. No, he plans on going beyond that and coaching for a long time. He's getting up there in age, but he's still getting it done. And Syracuse putting together a good squad this year. You know, final four run within the recent future and 2016 and a sweet 16 run in 2018. So Bayheim still proving that he can coach up there with the best of them. But it's a great question. And it's almost time for the start of the second half. We'll take a quick break here. I don't want to if anybody has any more questions, drop them along before we get underway. Syracuse leads it over Ryder at half, 49-29 inside the dome. Welcome back inside the Carrier Dome, newly renovated Syracuse. Also newly renovated, leads this one over Ryder, 49-29. to 29. And the second half's underway, starting quickly is Merrick Dolezal with a feed to the inside. Alan Griffin, give him the bucket and one. So it's 51-29, to 29, just seven seconds into the second half. Alan Griffin has a shot for a three-point play. That was definitely driven up off the get-go. Bayheim, the best at drawing things up like that. And the free throws up and good. 52 29, 1951 left to go. Clock continues to wind. Syracuse starts hot. The freshmen have been fantastic tonight for Syracuse, both Kadari Richmond and Woody Newton. Leading the way in scoring, though, is Alan Griffin and Joe Girard. Girard bouncing back after two difficult games. Drive to the inside. Ings couldn't get it to go. Rebound, Gary A going the other way for Syracuse. Griffin, pull up three, couldn't hit. And rebound, Dolajai, kick out. Kadari Richmond, pump fakes the pass, drives in, kick out. Dolajai gives it off to Gerard, top of the three, step back, lets a two-pointer fly, and there's a foul on the floor. It's off the ball against Murray Jr. Dwight Murray Jr., a junior. Out of Austell, Georgia, as I mentioned. And now Powell checking into the game for Ryder. 52-29, 1917 left to go in the second half. Three-pointer here, Kadari Richmond off the mark. And a rebound going the other way. It's Ings. Ings, kick out to Powell in the corner. Corner pump fake, drives to the inside. And a floater from the elbow is good. 52-31 now, 19 minutes to go. In the second half, Kadari Richmond running the point now for Syracuse. Gerard playing the two off the ball. Gary A with the screen comes up to take it. Now Alan Griffin comes over to get it. Back out. Gary A three-pointer, and he can't get that one to go. Hits off the rim and tips off the backboard. Rebound by Murray Jr. taking it down. A spin move, but Dolajai's there to reject that shot. Kadari Richmond, the rebound, up to Gerard on the through pass, and a foul on the inside. So that pass got a little bit wonky, and Gerard couldn't get a free throw or a layup to go, but he is going to take a trip to the charity strike. Gerard, first free. 
and good. So it's 53-31, 18-30 left to go, and Dolajai had a big block on the other end of the court. Gerard tonight, 14 points, 4 for 8 from the field, 4 for 7 for 3, and he's got a handful of free throws as well. 3 for 4, it's 54 to 31 now, 18-29 to go after Gerard hit two freebies. Ings, kick out. Murray driving. Back to Ings. Ings a pass to the inside, and he hits a cutting Murray for a bucket and one foul. The assist that time by Tyrell Bladen, a redshirt sophomore out of Coatesville, Pennsylvania. And the Bronx are drawing this one just a little bit closer. Free throw is up, and it is good. So the three-point play this time for the Bronx by Powell. It's 54-34 ball game, 18-14 left to go. Syracuse still by 20. Canary Richmond taking it up the court, a screen by Garrier. Richmond over to Dolajai, top of the key. Allen Griffin with a pump fake. Dishes it over to Dolajai. A jumper from the corner. Can't get it to go. It was about a 15-footer. Rebound Murray. Stutter steps up the way. Screen on the inside, kick out Powell, pump fakes, didn't let it go. Murray, now a shot from the elbow off the front rim and out. And an injured Syracuse player down on the court. So last thing Syracuse can afford right now, and it's Merrick Dolajai who's down, but he's giggling. He seems to be hopefully A-OK. Shaken up for sure, but he's, he's laughing. So I think he just gets the wind knocked out of him. You have to hope that Merrick Dolajai is OK. Certainly an asset to Syracuse after already losing Barama Sidibe at the five. Dolajai just takes an elbow to the chest that time off of Tyrell Bladen. Dolajai seems to be okay. Just took a nice elbow right to the chest. He seems to be able to shake it off. It's 17.44 left to go in the second. 29 seconds on the shot clock. 54.34 lead for Syracuse. What's Steven Dorff's podcast called? It's called the Scores Table Podcast. Great, great podcast. Has Syracuse legends on each week. He's had, uh, most recently, John Wallace before Tiana Manakaya. Before that, it was GMAC, Paul Harris, Mike Hopkins, Jim Beheim got it going. I mean, phenomenal podcast. I, I listen to every episode. It's just incredible because it's, a, it's stories that you can't hear anywhere else. You know, you can't get it anywhere else. These are stories that these guys experience together, stuff that you hear inside the Syracuse locker room that you just simply can't find anywhere else. And that's what makes it so exciting. Devendorf, extremely entertaining. He's funny. There's a ton of funny stories and it's just, it's just really nice insight into Syracuse basketball and the locker room and the culture. A lot of fun. Gerard couldn't get a floater to go and it was taken away by Murray jr. On the block, Murray jr. Pump fake gives it out to Powell Powell for three. And that one misses everything. Dolajai the rebound and taking it up the court. Fakes it, gives it over to Kadari Richmond. Richmond drives in, out to Allen Griffin. Griffin tried to find Dolajai. Bayheim looks livid. Griffin just sent that pass wildly over the head of Merrick Dolajai. Way too high for Dolajai to leap up and go grab. So Syracuse still with a 20-point lead. Jim Bayheim not too happy with the Illinois transfer's decision to pass that cross court right there on the skip. Powell lobbed to the inside. It's caught, but... They call it a push-off. Tyrell Bladen on the inside, a redshirt sophomore. And the foul on the inside was against Garrier, so Ryder to keep it. Trap in the corner, but instead it's Murray getting around it. Tried to get one to go. Garrier a rebound. And the Bronx unable to put some more points on the board. 16.46 left. Gerard at the top of the key with it. Gerard dribbles across his, across his chest. A little bit of a tough dribble. Got poked away, and he couldn't get a pass to Dolajai either. So instead, it's a steal for Powell. And 16.31 left. The Bronx have the possession down 20. Ings, top of the key. Gives it off to Powell on the left side. Lob to the middle. Nobody home except Quincy Garrier. He seemed to roll up his ankle a little bit, and he's shaking up. He's okay. He's still trotting down the court. 
physical play on the inside between both Gary A and now number 11, Tyrell Bladen in the ballgame. So those two have been going at it. Kadari Richmond at the top. Gerard, a deep three late in the shot clock. Still had eight seconds to go. Let one fly. And that one hit off the front rim. Not too much on it. Ings with a three-pointer from the top. That one no good. Kadari Richmond a rebound. Syracuse taking it the other way. Up the court to Gerard. Gerard back over to Richmond. Almost pulled up from three until someone came up behind him. He drives in. Lots of floater go. From about two feet away. Couldn't get it to go. Kick out. Gerard. Corner three. That one bricked off the side of the rim. And Ings is able to scoop it up. Go into the fast break for the Bronx. Ings to the bucket. Gives it off to Murray. Murray's fouled on the inside by Alan Griffin. And he'll take a trip to the charity stripe. Couldn't get the layup to fall. But nonetheless, he'll have two chances from the free throw line when we come back. A timeout on the court. And Syracuse leads at 54, 34, 15, 22. Let go over the Bronx. Take a quick break, break, and we'll be right back here. You're watching Orange Heat. Welcome back here on Orange Sheet. My name is Giovanni Heater, your play-by-play -play commentator for tonight. Syracuse, a 20-point lead over the Ryder Bronx, 54-34 to inside the Dome, looking to go 3-0. and So we'll take a look at some of the scores across the country. College football Saturday, a big one today. And some upsets on the brink here. BYU trailing to Coastal Carolina, the site of game day today, 22-17. to The head of the program, Bill Roth on the call. He's the head of the program at Virginia Tech. So I've gotten close with him. So wishing Bill best of luck calling the game down in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. A big one between Coastal Carolina and BYU with New Year's Six Bowls and possibly college football playoff implications. Oregon trailing to Cal 14 to 3 and Virginia Tech leading over Clemson 7 to 3 with 235 left to go in the first quarter. So Virginia Tech with a big lead right now over Clemson only by 4 but that's that's you're playing Clemson, so that's certainly exciting to see that game at Lane Stadium. Alabama, LSU still scoreless. Miami and Duke scoreless as well. Bay Baylor and Oklahoma, same story. Syracuse lost 45-21 to Notre Dame earlier today. And a bunch of other great games on as well. But we're back to basketball. First free throw is up good, and the second one off the mark. So it's a 19-point advantage for Syracuse. Syracuse in the first half went 12 for 28 from three point in the second half, 0 for 5 so far. A turnover here in the middle of the court. Ryder taking it the other way. Unable to hit the shot was Murray in a rebound here. Allen Griffin, full court pass to Merrick Dolajai, who lays it in. And that was fancy. Allen Griffin that time didn't send it out of bounds. He found the six foot nine senior from Slovakia. And Dolajai had an easy two. 56 to 35, 14 41 left to play in the ball game. Syracuse leads it by 21. A 
The Bronx trying to close the gap a little bit. 20-point lead for Syracuse. Three-pointer Murray from the right side. Rattles around and out. That was so close to hitting. Canary Richmond a rebound. Up court pass to Gary. Taken away by Murray in the middle of the court. And a dunk on the other end is rejected by Joe Girard the third. So the point guard comes up and takes it away from the center, Johnson, who tried to dunk it home. What a play by Joe Girard the sophomore. And a chaotic series of events results in Syracuse taking the possession back. Gerard with a phenomenal block, and that was something special right there. As Joey G takes it up the court, one of the leading scorers tonight for Syracuse. Back off to Dolajai. Screen from Gary A. Gerard thought about a three. Now he's going to penetrate the inside, and he's fouled. Lost his footing a little bit, was fouled on the floor. Tightly guarding him was Powell. So the foul will go against Powell. 13.57 to go. Syracuse up 56.35. Syracuse not in the bonus. Neither is Ryder. Therefore, it will be another inbound over to Kadari Richmond. Alan Griffin gives it off to Dolajai, top of the key, patiently waiting for Gerard. Gerard takes it, screened by Dolajai. Gerard drives in. He lost the handle on the ball, and it's taken away in the middle of the court. Another steal here for Ryder, and this time it's Ayuri Agamanu Johnson again. Murray couldn't get a three pointer to go. Kaderi Richmond a rebound, quickly taking it up the court. Richmond all the way to the bucket, gets it to go. He's fouled on the floor. And it's called a blocking foul. Don't count the bucket for Syracuse. Still a 56-35, 21-point advantage. 13-34 to go on the court foul. Jerry McNamara is shaking his head, and so is Jim Beheim. Not sure if they're disappointed with how their team has played in the second half. Certainly not the same story. Syracuse scored nearly 50 points in the first half, 49 to be exact. And now, so far, they've only scored 17 points in the second Almost seven minutes through. So a timeout on the court. TV timeout. Syracuse still with a big lead. We'll take a look at some college football scores from across the country. Also tonight, Gonzaga and Baylor playing some men's hoops as well. So we'll take a look at some different scores. You guys have any more questions? I'd love to answer them for Syracuse basketball or football or whatever it may be. Some big NFL season coming to a close here as the Buffalo Bills play Monday Night Football against the Niners. Kind of crazy they're going to play at the Arizona Cardinals Stadium. Don says, Cuse is a top 50 team now. Do they get the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I, I, I think they do, Don. And, and I wasn't so sure coming into the year. I wasn't optimistic after losing Hughes. Uh, I mean, a, a true talent in Elijah Hughes. And it was just, it was just hard to wrap your head around well we, we wouldn't have made it last year, and nothing really changed, but we lost Hughes. But then you see how Woody Newton, and especially especially um, how well Kadari Richmond can play. Beheim's improved. I'm looking for Gerard to be improved. Sidibe, when he comes back, improved on the inside. I think we are looking at a uh, NCAA tournament team. Um, I think that I'll even be bold and say it's finally that year. Back to the norm of Syracuse basketball where you're not biting your nails on selection Sunday and this team, you know, they're comfortable with a six, five, five, six seed. Um, I wouldn't go as high as, you know, four or three. That's, those are, that's a little tough, but I think you're looking at a team that maybe if we can beat uh, Rutgers, gets themselves back into the top 25 conversation, dropped a little bit after that Bryant game. And it's a shame because if they could have made it look like this, Syracuse would probably be in the top 25 at this point. Uh, but uh, you know, that close game still, Drop Syracuse because they started at 29th in the Ken Palm. Now they dropped to 49th after the uh, close win. And then after beating Niagara convincingly by 30, they go back up to 20 or excuse me, uh, 45th. So from 29th to 49th to 45th is where they currently sit in the Ken Palm. Matthew says, is there going to be attorney this year? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I They say it's going to be a one location, possibly even a situation where maybe they bubble it, you know, could be. There's a lot of teams to do something like that. It really did work at like the Mohegan Sun, though, where they did it. And teams like Virginia Tech, Villanova, Virginia, those, those teams, those teams played up there. Plenty of teams played there. Teams came and went. 
playing different, you know, preseason tournaments. So that seemed to work. I could see a format like that. Uh, but we'll see where we are. Hopefully by March, basketball will be an okay. If, you know, if, if the numbers start to calm down and stuff, we might be saying, well, I can't believe we thought there might not be one, you know, at that point, which would certainly be nice. But I, I honestly, I, I, I don't have an answer for you. I have no idea. Stuff shocks me every day. Richmond took a trip to the line. He missed the free throw to make it a one and one. Syracuse now on the bonus. Three pointer from the right side, unable to hit for the Browns. Was Rodney Hedner. And 13 24 left to go. Syracuse leads at 56 35, 20 point advantage. <clears throat> but Murray and the Browns have the ball. Murray, an inbound pass way up the court. Finds Powell with a looming Kadari Richmond. Now driving inside was Ings. A swing pass to the left side. Murray, a pump fake. Drives in. Shot from the elbow off the mark. And a lot of excitement, a lot of athleticism out of Murray. Unable to hit. Rebound, Alan Griffin. Gerard taking it up the court. Gives it off to Kadari Richmond. Now to Griffin. Back to Dolajai. Top of the key. Dolajai over to Gerard. Gerard pulls up deep. Three. Count it. Big bucket, Joe Girard, but instead there's a foul on the floor, and I believe it's against Syracuse. The foul's on Dolajai for an illegal screen, so the bucket will not count. Nonetheless, Girard hit one from way deep. Murray gives it off to Ings, top of the key. Back to Henderson, Jr. Back to Powell. Now Ings. Inside, Bladen. Taken away by Richmond. Richmond a steal. Going up the court is Gerard. Gerard lives one to the inside. Alan Griffin wanted to stick it home. Gives it off to Garrier, and Syracuse still gets the two. It wasn't as fancy as an Alan Syracuse gets two, and it's Garrier with the lay and assist it to Alan Griffin. Murray on the right side. Up to Powell, top of the key. Back to Murray in those neon green shoes. Over to Ings, then back to Powell. Now Henderson, three, back to Murray. Out Powell right side, pump fake. Got Kadari Richmond to bite, and it hits off the back rim. No good, foul on the floor. Looks like it goes against the Bronx. Inside, guilty party is 6'10", forward, 230-pounder Tyrell Bladen, redshirt sophomore. Instead, Syracuse taking it the other way. 12-1 left to go in this game. Syracuse up 58-35. Alan Griffin in the bonus, so he'll have a one and one at the free throw line. The first one is up and good. Nearly missed it that time. Syracuse elects to keep everybody back. Griffin, second one is good. So 60-35 is the lead for Syracuse. 12-01 left to go. Powell thought about a three. Gives it off. Ings now top of the key. Back to Powell in the corner. Syracuse maybe looking to trap. Inside. Dolajai gets a foot on it. And a timeout on the floor for the television program. So a TV timeout on the court. We'll take a quick break here as well on Orange Sheet Syracuse with a big lead, 60-35. to 35. Garrier is coming back, electrifying a little bit here and showing glimpses of what he did in the previous game against Niagara. Syracuse up big inside the dome. We'll be right back.
60 to 35 is the score inside the dome. Syracuse, a big advantage over the Ryder Bronx, and it's all orange inside the dome so far. Some scores across the country in college football are exciting. And speaking of college football, I had the opportunity to attend virtual college game day today, just kind of random selection, entered a drawing back in September. Was picked to be a virtual fan this morning on college game day. Pretty cool experience. You create signs and do the whole thing so it was it was pretty pretty unique uh very cool um i was the lone syracuse fan to my knowledge and uh there were a lot of fans of a lot of other teams and they don't talk about syracuse much so powell on the left side in the corner now back up to the top we're back to basketball Eleven thirty-eight left to go syracuse up 60 to 35 rider with the ball ings gives it off to powell Now pass to the inside and a shot clock violation. Last to touch it was Pope. Jeremiah Pope for the Ryder Bronx and 11-24 left to go. Syracuse will take it back, who currently hold a 25-point lead. Gerard taking it up the court. The lineup now for Syracuse is Dolajai at the five. Gerard, Griffin, Garrier, and Kaderi. So you're starting five, essentially. Jump shot from the free throw line is no good that time for Alan Griffin, and Syracuse gives up the possession. Ryder taking it the other way, and a foul shooting the ball on Ings. So Ings will take a trip to the free throw line. A guilty party, Kadaria Richmond, and Ings will have two from the charity strike. 11 3 left to play. 60 to 35, still your score. And instead, it's a foul on the floor. They didn't give him the shooting advantage, so it is an inbound. Powell at the top. Now Ings driving in, lets a floater go. No foul called this time. Couldn't sell it off the mark, and Gary the rebound. Off the court is Alan Griffin. Griffin dribbles, kick out, Gerard three. Give it to him. Joey G is telling Syracuse fans, don't count him out just yet. A big performance so far tonight out of Joe Gerard the third. And with 10 and a half minutes to go, he's got the orange up by 28. Three-pointer is up and deflected away. The block by Canary Richmond. Griffin couldn't chase it down. Now a pass to the inside. Foul on the court, and it'll go against Merrick Dolezal. Selling it was Tyrell Bladen trying to go up for a shot. Dolezal gets up on his back. Bladen will have two from the free throw line. Dolzai's got three fouls, 10-15 left to go. Kadaria Richmond's going to check out as well for the Orange. Now in the game, Quincy Garrier, Joey G, Woody Newton. It appears that Alan Griffin is in, and Frank Anselm enters the game for the first time tonight. We haven't seen Frank just yet, saw him a little bit last game, a little bit in the opener, but nothing too huge. Freshman, highly touted, center. Jumper off the mark for Ings. Rebound this time on the inside. Johnson trying to power at home, and he travels. He walked with it. One too many steps in the post. And Syracuse will take it going the other way. Ogamondu Johnson couldn't do much with it. 10.05 left to play in county. Syracuse up 28, 63, 35 is your score. Gerard handling the ball. Gives it over to Alan Griffin on the right side. Griffin pumps fakes, dribbles through his legs, lets it go over to Garrier, and Garrier walked with it as well. Garrier not too happy with it. <laughs> Bayheim says, hey, buddy, you, you absolutely walked with it. So just take it. Turnover Syracuse. 15 of them. Ryder only 14, but 15 turnovers is probably the one negative for Syracuse. That's why they don't have more points than they currently do. 63-35 after scoring nearly 50 in the first half. Nine minutes left to go. Garrier puts up a shot. He's fouled, and he'll take two from the free throw line, but wanted the and one. 9.33 left. Garrier a chance to extend this. 
And instead, it is goaltending. They reversed the call. So that was goaltending. And the one that blocked it away was Ahiri Ogamanu Johnson. So it is an and one. That's why Gary A wanted the two. And they do give it to him. So now it's a 31-point game. Syracuse leads it 66-35. 9.28 left to go. Left side, Pope gives it up to Murray at the top. Murray is screen. Driving to the inside. Kick out. Left side, Pope from the corner. Missed it all. Air ball. Woody Newton, the rebound up to Joe Girard the third. Girard gives it off. Alan Griffin thought about it from the left corner. Didn't let it fly. Back to Gerard, top of the key. Now over to Garrier, same spot. Garrier drives in, puts a shot up. That one's off the front rim and out. Thought he got fouled. Ref doesn't call it. Murray Jr. drives in, a fancy reverse layup. Wow, that was special right there for the Bronx. And Dwight Murray Jr., the six-foot guard with a fancy play. He's very athletic, some fancy dribble moves. Really, really, definitely just, just the best player on the court right now for Ryder. I mean, it's clear that he's their go-to guy. He facilitates. He can score the bucket. He's their main shooter, but he also facilitates it. He's the go-to guy for the Bronx, and that was a fancy move right there. Gary A missed the first free throw, 37-66. Chance to make it back a 30-point game, and off the mark it is. 8.34 to go. They didn't count the first free throw because of a lane infraction, so instead one more, Gary A. First one is up and good. So it's 67-37, back to a 30-point ball game. 8.33 left to play. Powell gives it off to Pope at the top. Now left side, Henderson thought about it. Back to Pope. Pope over to Henderson, top of the key. Henderson pump fake. Now Murray, Murray driving along. Murray circles back around, kick out. Henderson deep three at the end of the shot clock. Couldn't get it to fall. Joe Girard the third closes in on a rebound. Exactly eight minutes to play. 30-point lead for the Orange. Girard pulls up deep three off the front rim and out. Gary A wanted the rebound. He hits the court hard. Rebound Henderson and Ryder Bronx are taking it the other way. Murray driving it. Kick out Powell. Powell wants three. Give him three. And Ryder's within 27 with 7.42 left to play. Frank Anselm at the top of the zone taking it. Over to Alan Griffin. Griffin driving in. Griffin lays one, kissing it off the glass. That's two for Syracuse, and it's a 69-40 ball game. 7.20 to go. Murray Jr. gives it left side. Now Powell at the top. Powell circling around back to Murray Jr. Murray unable to penetrate the zone. Finds a cutting Powell. Frank Anselm closes out for a block off the jumper. Rebound Woody Newton. Upcourt pass Gerard. Gerard stops his footing. Pull up three. Swish. Joe Gerard the third. The bucket off the block from Frank Anselm. And Syracuse up 72-40. It's a 32-point lead. 644 left to play inside the dome. What a play by Joe Gerard. Really patient on that one. Nobody around him. Doesn't just stop quick and pull up. Really stops, let his feet set, then decides to let that thing fly. Knew it all along, and it looked money right from hand release. Murray Jr. lets one go off the back rim and out. Rebound Frank Anselm. So he's been a he's been having a productive couple of minutes here. Garrier wants three. Give him three. Quincy Garrier hits the shot. Beheim said that his shooting would be much improved from last season. You would have never seen him take it last year. And he was money. Right there, it's a 75-40 lead for Syracuse with six minutes to go just under. Powell circles around. Syracuse is 15 for 27 from three-point land tonight. Powell quite tightly guarded at the top of the zone. Gary A, little push-off here. Three is no good late in the shot clock. Rodney Henderson couldn't hit. 
Gerard takes it up the court the other way. Five and a half minutes to go. Gerard pump fake. Nearly pops that one. Instead gives it off to Gary A. Anselm couldn't handle it. And a foul on the interior. It's against the Bronx. And it's Naheem Benson, the guilty man. And TV timeout here inside the Dome. So we'll take a quick break here. Feel free to ask any questions in the chat. We'll talk Syracuse basketball. Nonetheless, Joe Girard with a big three and Quincy Garrier, one more added to it. 35-point lead in the Dome for the Cuse. 75-40 with five and a half to play. Welcome back inside the Dome. A big 35-point lead stretched out for Syracuse. It's been an offensive onslaught for the Orange, both in the offensive first half, but a little bit in the second half. It started out a little bit stalled for Syracuse. Nonetheless, it's gotten going. Frank Anselm at the free throw line to extend the lead. First one's up. Will seniors be eligible to come back next year because of COVID? Well, in football, fall sports, that is the case. Basketball, I will have to get back on fall. Poor research done. But I will get back to you on that one next broadcast. Syracuse on Rutger, Syracuse and Rutgers on Tuesday. I'll have an answer. And Salim goes two for two from the charity stripe. It's 77 to 40. Syracuse leads at 519 left to go in this ball game. It's all but over, but the Orange can certainly add insult to injury. Murray on the drive for the Brown. Spins around. Powell almost lets it fly. Ten seconds left to go in the shot clock. Murray's going to have to do it himself. He's done it all night. Floater let go. He gets fouled, and he'll head to the front line. Let it fly with three seconds left in the shot clock. Really a desperation heave, and he gets fouled. Not a three-pointer. It's a floater. Got a little bit of penetration, and he'll send himself to the charity strike. Foul on Frank Anselm there, the freshman. And Syracuse fans also very excited about him. Frank wearing number five for Syracuse, six foot ten, two hundred and ten pound freshman. Westlake, Georgia, originally out of Nigeria, then Westlake, Georgia. Following that, 
And then 502 left to play. 77-42 lead for Syracuse. Kadari Richmond gives it off to Woody Newton now. Robert Braswell managing the ball for Syracuse. Back to Kadari Richmond. Now Woody Newton. Pass to the inside. John Bolajak gives it off. Frank and Salim who dunks it home. And the foul. Flex your muscles, big fella. Frank and Salim slams it home for Syracuse. Off the assist from John Bola Jock. Center to center. Two of the young bucks on this Syracuse squad. And Frank Anselm's going to take a chip to the charity strike. Plus the bucket. And one. Free throws up. That one no good. So not, unable to convert on the end one opportunity. Still a 79-42 lead for Syracuse. Pass to the inside. Now quickly going the other way are the Bronx. And there's going to be a foul on the interior. Taking a strip to the charity stripe now for the Broncos is going to be Jalen McGlone. That's the first time we've said his name tonight because he's getting his first burn of the ball game. Foul on Frank Anseline once again. Free throw is up and good. So the one and one is okay for the Bronx, and he hits it. 434 left to go, 79-43. Second free throw is up and off the mark. Kadari Richmond pulls down the rebound. Syracuse moving quickly the other way. Kadari Richmond pushing the pace of this game right now and decides to pull it out, slow things down a little bit. Now the drive for Richmond. Lob inside. Anseline wanted the dunk, but instead he's going to take a trip to the line. Nearly slammed it home. He is fouled, and he'll have a shot for two once more. Anseline, really a big body for Syracuse, a muscular guy on the inside, something Syracuse has lacked at the center position. And again, like I said, Syracuse fans excited for this guy. 79-43 is the lead for the Orange. 4.22 to go. Anseline, first free throws up, and the Orange have hit 80 points. 80-43 now is the score. Anseline once again. This one is money. Both of them swish. Nothing but net. Frank Anseline. It's an 81-43 ball game. 420 left to go. Syracuse having themselves an offensive explosion tonight. Kick out Murray. Top of the key. Over to Ingle. Powell thought about letting it fly. Decides not to. Back over to Ings. Ings on the drive. Over to Murray. Murray, top of the key, penetrating inside, lob on the interior and unable to flush it home that time for the Bronx. Is Jalen McGlone once again, foul on Frank Anselm. That's three in the last handful of minutes, but he's played well offensively as well. So they're going to take a quick break at the Dome, 356 left, and we'll do the same. We'll be right back here on Orange Heat. Syracuse leads at 81-43. Thanks for joining us.
Welcome back on Orange Heat. My name is Giovanni Heater, your play-by-play -play commentator for the night, and thank you so much for joining me on Orange Heat with Giovanni Heater. Syracuse and Ryder just closing out this ball game. It's a huge lead for the Orange, nearly 40 points at the moment. If you have any questions on Syracuse basketball, love to address anything. And Syracuse is really trying to close out It'll be a win to go 3-0. and It's an 81-43 advantage. 356 left to go for the Orange. 3-0 and heading into a game against Rutgers. That Rutgers game is set for a 9-30 tip on December 8th, which will be on Tuesday. That'll be our next broadcast here on Orange Sheet, so hopefully you'll join us on Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. as Syracuse and Rutgers get underway. Out in New Jersey. It's a road game for Syracuse, their first one of the season. Following that, they'll play a road game again against Boston College. It'll be a 1 p.m. tip on Saturday. So the free throw is up and good now. Remember that the Bronx were coming back with a couple of free throw tries here. Foul on the inside against Anselim and Jalen McGlone had two chances at it. Missed one, made one, and an offensive rebound. Murray drive to the inside. Kick out. Ings thought about shooting it, and a foul on the floor. Kadari Richmond guilty. Beheim doesn't like the call. It's a blocking foul. 344 left to play. Syracuse still up, 81-44. So Ings with a one and one at the charity stripe. First one is good. And Ryder in the double bonus says, well, so wouldn't have mattered. He still would have had another shot at the free throw line and 344 left to go. Syracuse just trying to close out this win. Ings another chance. This one is up and good. So it is 45, 46 to 81 now. Clock winds under reaching three and a half minutes. Woody Newton at the top of the key, tightly guarded, gives it off to Braswell. Braswell, a nice, nice spin move. Off to Richmond. Richmond, John Bolajak, a jumper from the corner. Count it. We didn't know John Bolajak had a jump shot in him, but the big man lets one fly and he sticks it. Now Powell driven on the round for Ryder. Back to Murray, over to Ings. Ings looking for a screen. Back to Murray. Murray, tough left side. Ings on the drive. Kick out. Powell for three. Rolls around the rim and out. Rebound Frank Anselm. Pass up to Kadari Richmond running the point. So your lineup right now, Anselm, John Bola, Jock, Braswell, Woody Newton, and Kadari Richmond. An extremely long and tall Line up right now for Syracuse. Richmond, screen from Anselm. Pass to Newton on the right side. Now pass on the inside to Anselm. Anselm was looking for a cutting Newton. Newton was not sure that he was supposed to cut and instead going the other way is Murray Jr. making the bucket go. So 83-48, the Bronx get a score off the hands of Murray Jr. with the steal. And Anselm, just a little bit of a freshman mistake, miscommunication. Robert Braswell lets a three fly. No good. Anselm offensive rebound. Gives it off to Richmond. Richmond lets a three fly from the top of the key. That one misses. Murray Jr., a three going the other way. Off the back rim and out. And it's getting a little sloppy here in the dome. 152 left to play. Rebound Woody Newton going the other way for Syracuse. Kadari Richmond, top of the key. Richmond off to Newton. Newton lets a three fly from the right side. Bounces off the rim. Couldn't go. Foul on the interior against Frank Anselm. It's an over the back. That's his fourth foul tonight. Beheim is telling me, you know, just get your hands up. That's it. Just keep the hands up there. And you avoid that mistake. But he's letting the freshman play right now. Late game situation. Just letting these guys get their burn, get, get their chemistry together. These are the future. You know, these are the future, and some of these guys are going to contribute now. Some will wait, but I really like what I'm seeing out of Frank. 
especially love what we're seeing out of Kadari and especially Woody Newton as well. Free throw is up and no good. The one at the charity stripe is Ahiri Ogamanu Johnson, and it's a double bonus situation. Frank Anselim comes out. Jim Beheim going to talk to him, and he's just telling him, you know, keep your hands up and whatever else he's saying. Syracuse leads at 83-48. Johnson, free throw this time, nothing but net. So 132 left to play. Syracuse up by a handful. Kadari Richmond running the point once more. Richmond to John Bolajak. Back to Richmond on the right side. Richmond, cross-court pass to a cutting Braswell. Braswell, it's a tough layup to go. Nice play out of Robert Braswell. And with a minute 10 left, Syracuse extends this lead. Corner three, Powell wants it. High contact made, no call. And Murray Jr. makes the three connect. They wanted a whistle on the initial three-point shot. The rest weren't buying a flop, and Murray Jr. sticks it. 85-52, Syracuse leads it. 48 seconds to play. Driving in is Braswell. Fouled on the floor. Don't count the bucket. The ref waves it as if it's safe, calling baseball. Nonetheless, the foul's on the floor. So no bucket. Robert Braswell trying to earn some playing time here. Syracuse fans have been excited for him. Some thought he might transfer, and he decides to stick it out, stay in Syracuse after Elijah Hughes's departure and see if he can be a key contributor to this team. 86-52. Braswell hits the first free throw, 46 seconds left. And the second one is up and good. Braswell goes two for two, 87 points for Syracuse. Murray Jr. taking it down the court. Pass up to the top. Riders really only played the same six guys, really, to be honest with you. Corner three, and that one's off the front rim and out. Braswell to rebound it. Jalen McGlone couldn't get it to go, and Kadari Richmond takes it up the court for Syracuse. Richmond nearly gets his pocket picked. Hits Braswell in the left corner. 13 seconds left, and the Orange are just going to look to run out this clock. 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, three, two, one. And that does it. Syracuse, 3-0 and on the season, following an 87-52 to win over the Ryder Bronx inside the Carrier Dome. It was all Lawrence tonight, an offensive explosion. And Syracuse fans have to be happy with that performance. Jim Beheim, I'm sure he'll have plenty to say about it. But has to be somewhat happy with how his team played here tonight. Take a look at some of the box score stats here for Syracuse. Before we conclude this broadcast. So looking at some of the stats here for Syracuse. Quincy Garrier, 11 points. Seven total rebounds, three assists, and a steal. Leading the way in scoring was Alan Griffin with 23 points. He had four rebounds, five assists, three steals. A great game out of Alan Griffin. Gerard came in second with 21 points. What a response out of Joe Gerard III for those who doubted him coming into this game. He also drew down two rebounds, five assists, and one block, and it was a big one. The other thing for Syracuse, 16 total turnovers. I guess that's the one ugly thing. Woody Newton had nine points. Kadari Richmond had seven. Dolajai had four. Anselim had six. And Braswell had four as well. John Bullajak, just the one bucket. So Syracuse comes away with 87 points tonight and 87-52 win over the Ryder Broncos. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me tonight. Appreciate everybody tuning in, and we'll be right here again on Tuesday night as Syracuse takes at nights in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. That's a 9.30 tip-off, a late one, and we'll be right here on Orange Heat. So thank you so much for joining. See you next time. Syracuse wins it, 87-52 over Ryder. My name's Giovanni Heater. Everybody have a great night.